Hi, Ed. How are you? I'm pretty good this morning. Awesome. So tell me, who are you and what do you do? Eddie Cohen from the south side of Chicago, born and raised. I uh, competed in powerlifting for 28 years and got really, really good. I won a whole bunch of world championships, a whole bunch of dozens of uh, world records, traveled the world, and now basically for fun, I get out and I do a lot of seminars and workshops. My main job that I'm opening up within a couple of weeks is a processing lab for cannabis in Michigan. Very nice. What's the name of this processing lab? Boone Labs in Buchanan, Michigan. I, right now, you're being very humble. You broke 71 world records, regarded as the greatest of all time in, in powerlifting. So very, and many of those world records still stand today. So a very, very humble man here. Uh, just to say that you were really good at it is a, it's an understatement. But the way that you got into this business is actually really interesting. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, the, the business of lifting or the business of uh, cannabis? Thank you for clarifying. The business of cannabis. Um, one of my clients that I was training at the gym, he came up to me and he wanted to get involved in the business with his dad. And I knew a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, but the people I know wouldn't just help anybody because they're not me. So he pretty much asked what, uh, what I would need to be involved. And I told him and they said, yes. Uh -huh. So then we went full bore and we applied for a whole bunch of licenses for those recreational stores in Illinois, but they were kind of, it seems like they were predetermined and bought up already uh, to say it nicely. Mm -hmm. So the company that we went through to get the licenses uh, had an idea of a fully integrated lab in Michigan where we do processing and have a grow. So we're just about to open up the processing lab and after we get up and going, then we'll work on getting the grow going. Fantastic. And there's a lot of benefits for using cannabis in in major sports, right? That's, I feel- Oh, just ma mm -hmm. ma major sports, but overall life. And uh, especially people with anxiety or uh, PTSD and, you know, uh, military people. Absolutely. And then tell us a little bit about how did you get into powerlifting? I tried to be a bodybuilder because I saw Arnold on TV, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I went my first bodybuilding contest when I was mm, about 16. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this is kind of fun. But I didn't really care for all the dieting and get up, up 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 on stage and the little tiny briefs and posing and stuff. <laughs> and then I watched a powerlifting meet. They used to have it on TV all the time on Wild World of Sports on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And I just tried it and felt I was like a duck to water. I fell in love with it. I don't know if you set out to be the greatest of all time, but during that time, you just pushed yourself and pushed yourself until you you broke all these records. Yeah, it, it, it was. I, I only set out to be better. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of morphs into everything that you talk about is I just tried to get better each and every time. I had a program over so many weeks and months that I had to do that I was predetermined already. Sets, reps, numbers, weights, everything that I never varied from. But when I wrote it down, everything was completely doable in my mind. It was nothing that was going to be outrageous. Like I couldn't squat 400 and all of a sudden in 12 weeks go up to 500. It's not going to work like that. Mm -hmm. And all the other exercises that went along with it built up a strong base all around everything else. So I had the structure to keep moving forward at all times. And then after one training cycle or a contest, I would drop back down and do it all over again with a bigger load. Hence, I got a bigger and stronger base every time out to be able to handle a bigger and stronger weight at the end. Yeah, and that's, that speaks to setting incremental goals, doing better than you did the day before, right? Not comparing yourself to others, but comparing yourself to yourself. So in marketing, it takes a level of personal branding to do what you do. So like you said, you didn't set out to be the GOAT, but you did it incrementally with goals. But at one point, 
you know, you're smashing all these world records, you're, you're a brand. So what's your approach or philosophy to personal branding? What, what is Ed Cohen's approach to personal branding? It wasn't a conscious effort to say, I got to make my name this and this. Mm -hmm. I just realized that I got more people behind me and on my side if I was nice. <laughs> yes. I helped, I helped everyone all the time, regardless. <laughs> Sometimes even if they didn't ask for my help. <laughs> An issue that a lot of large corporations have is not getting that brand awareness or not getting their name out there. How did you do that while you were working up? Did you just focus on each on each competition? Yes. Mm -hmm. And in the gym, in the gym and in a competition. And then when you go out amongst regular people in society, just be nice. I think too many business focuses, they focus too much on the business and not on the real part of, uh, let's say, uh, humanity. Mm -hmm. And for people to be able to put their product with not just saying, oh, this is a good product. Oh, I feel good about wearing this product. That's a big difference. Now, instead of buying one of them, they'll buy 10. Yeah. Yeah, building that uh, that brand loyalty, right? And get, keeping consumers coming, not because they believe in you, not only because it's a good product, but because they believe in the mission or the values behind the product or the person or the company. Yeah, they, you, they feel good about buying your product or supporting you. Yeah, give people a reason to care, right? Because on your way to setting these world records, on your way to becoming, you know, who you are, one of the greatest power lifters of all time, you had, you, I'm, I'm sure you experienced several setbacks. So how did you get through those setbacks? Was it the community that you built in? Was it a mantra? What what helped you get I, through? I did, I did really have good people around me. My little community was solid and they believed in me no matter what. And then my mission <laughs> slash obsession uh -huh. was to get better and I would find ways to get better. If I had a little injury, I would find who the best doctor was anywhere in the world, especially in the community of uh, strength. And I would call them on the phone and say, what do I do? And then I would put my own knowledge with their knowledge and I would find a way to get it done. But in a very slow, methodical way where I didn't have the issues pop up again. Very disciplined mindset, having clear goals, having incremental goals. It sounds like a, a recurring theme in your life here. It is. There was there was nothing that was going to stop me as long as I knew in my heart that I could get better. I had no reason to stop or to vary what I was doing at all. I didn't pay attention to anyone else. My single mindedness was focused on me when I was in the gym. After that, I was just a regular guy. Yeah. How'd you keep up this motivation? How did you know you were gonna get better? Cause I'm sure, were there ever dark days where you thought for a split second, you know, what if I can't? No, I just knew it. When when, when I would sit down and write out my plan for whatever X amount of months, uh -huh. all my goals that I set, since they were small increments, they never freaked me out. They never seemed like they were impossible. I already had, uh, you know, 95% confidence or greater that I could achieve them right when I started that new week. Because I knew that all along the way, it may be challenging and the challenging part is great. I loved, I loved it. Mm -hmm. But it was never something that I didn't think was doable or possible for me and everyone around me. You've been there before tech was prevalent. You know, it, you were there when there was no technology involved in the sport. You know, people couldn't tweet out when people were doing these deadlifts. That was a dial-up <laughs> computer. How have you seen the sport change with the introduction of technology with athletes now? Are they more distracted? What what have you seen it affecting the younger generation now, now that you're able to look back at that? Well, first, when you go in the gym, there's like 20 tripods set up with everyone filming themselves. <laughs> Which some, sometimes is a little bit ridiculous because 
you ri rely on the video to teach you how to lift instead of your own mind and body figuring some of it out. So yeah. you don't get the same type of feeling. The, the greatest part is the amount of athletes have like, you know, a hundred times more mm -hmm. because it's become so much more popular. And accessible, it seems like. Yes, and uh, the accessibility, the information that no one had before and to see what everyone is doing as, it's not really motivation. Motivation is in your heart um, or passion is in your heart. Motivation is just in your mind. Mm. So you have to have, you, if you have a passion for it, you can get better. Um, but to see other people do things that weren't possible and then you do something in the gym, it makes you think, you know what, I might have a chance at this, but you have to have the right plan. So then you have to go back out of the social media and the tech and back into yourself. And then when you do that, it all starts all over again, where you go back, you can go back to tech again and see what other people are doing or what other people are saying. So you can get all the best experts in the world, but also all the worst experts in the world too. Use it to help you, not to drive you. Right, right. The, the, the drive should be by your own passion. Yeah. And to be in tune with yourself, we've learned that through history, not just this new wave of you know meditation and everything, but American Indians were saying that back when we came to this country, right? They were very in tune with themselves. They listened to their body. Now it turns out they were right the whole time. Yeah, so, anyone that had to survive, yeah. they learned how to survive with all the same steps that we did. Yeah. Now, there's a, a friend of mine, Stan Efferding, who's great in business and lifting, always told me that there's nothing anyone will be able to do to or for you that'll be better than what you can do to and for yourself. So even though you can get information on people, you have to apply it to yourself or else you'll never be able to do it. You can't rely on other people to do shit for you. It has to come from you. You can you can have them set you up, but you have to do it or you, nev you never ever learn and you'll never get better. It won't be sincere. Yeah, I'm not a very religious person, but it even says that in the Bible. I grew up religious, but not now. But God helps those that help themselves. Yes, and it, it, it doesn't have to be, it could be spiritual. Yes, yeah, but you gotta help yourself first. Set your plans, be dedicated, be kind, and also build your community. Not intentionally, it'll come organically, but build that community of support around you. You never have to look over your shoulder. That's true. And that eases your stress. And then you also have people that are looking out for you in your best interest here. Exactly, because you're not a dick. <laughs> exactly, that is a that is a perfect place to end. I am grateful for you and your time, the GOAT. I learned so much. And is there anything else that you'd like to share or anything that-, that No, I'm, I'm good, I, I, I don't, I don't. I don't really have to sell anything anymore. I mean, you know, besides the business, uh, Boone Labs in Buchanan, Michigan. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm good with everything in my life. Thank you, Ed. I'm grateful. Matt says hi, by the way. He's Thanks. By the Slap house. around for me. I will. You hope your wife gets better and Thanks. we hopefully we'll meet in person one day. I'm sure we will. Maybe on a safari. Yes, you have to come.